Good evening, campers. It's me, Kieran. As part of the Booker Boy Book Club, we have read The Trees by Percival Everett, which I think has one of the best cover designs because of something that it has on the back. But we'll get there. This book has been doing the rounds and it has been absolutely adored by most people. This is a comic satire with an absolutely gut punch of the fact that this is talking about the history of lynching and how race and racism works within America. As I am reading this book in relation to the Booker Prize, there's definitely a reference to be made and it would be interested to read this novel alongside Paul Beatty's Booker Prize winning The Sellout. Both novels are satirical but they're also grounded within the contemporary and current states of America. An interesting fact about those books is that they both end with the potus of the current time appearing in some way, shape or form. Trump with the trees, Obama in the sellout. I will leave my review of the sellout down below, but you can compare and contrast at your leisure. The trees opens up in Money, Mississippi. Now, those who are acquainted with American history, you might already know where this is going for someone who is not acquainted with American history or the civil rights movement in America. Holy, I didn't really know where this was going. As I've never really studied American history, I didn't really see the connection, but I had heard of the name Emmett Till. And the story of Emmett Till really encompasses this novel and how an act done in the past could cause trauma through the generations. If the name of Emma Till means absolutely nothing to you, all you need to know is that he was brutally murdered and lynched after an accusation was made towards him. What that accusation is, you either know or you're going to find out reading the trees. However, the trees doesn't really open up in the way that you're expecting this novel to start, which is a, a bunch of white people talking about a ripped pool. Here we get introduced to Wheat, to Hot Mama Yella, Granny C, Junior Junior, and the baby named Junior Junior Junior. But there's one name that you could pretty much throw away, and that's Wheat. Why? Well, he's dead. He's been brutally murdered. It looks as though he's been strangled with barbed wire. Uh, but where this murder has taken place, there's another body. There's a black man whose face is absolutely pulverized and his body looks as though it's been thrashed like wheat. So the characters of the reader can identify wheat. We have no idea who this black man is. All we know is that in his hands are the white man's testicles. And this is where this cover's brilliant. So you have the cherries here, but uh, they look like gonads. I really bloody love that. Well done. Well done done in Flux Press. I thought that was, that was good. That was good. The police arrive at the crime scene. The bodies are taken over to the morgue, but uh, the, the black person's body uh, disappears. A, a door that has been completely unopenable is, is, is now opened and, and the body has gone and throughout the trees, mass hysteria breaks out in around money, but also across America. There are more white men being killed, resultantly every time the gonad holding black man's body disappears and everyone has no clue what's going on. And let's bring in our two policemen, Jim Davis and Ed Morgan are your Startsky and Hutch. They are your, can I even, I don't think I could think of another cockpit. You'd think they would be more cop parents. Why do I think there's more? They're a cop parent. They are the black policemen. They are the black representatives in the police force. And we're going to find out that not only the police station, but the absolute community around these murders taking place are wholly racist. Some of them being involved in the KKK. Let's stop the plot here. This is a detective novel. There is a plot that needs to be followed. So if you're intrigued, go and pick up the trees. And let's talk about why this didn't quite work for me. Although I could say a lot about the overselling of the supernatural present within this book that I think pe people are really gung-ho in for, uh, the names. The names in this book are a, they're a little bit on the nose, I feel. The FBI agent 
her birthday hind, her behind, the three Asian characters of, I really wish I was making this up, Ho Chi and Min? Really? Then the one that got the biggest from me was Granny C because she witnesses something like C C but Ho Chi Minh was like no you no one gets away with that three Asian characters Ho Chi Minh okay moving on from Granny C we have Mama Z the the centurion witch who despite the 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 sublime chapter that is 62 i think that chapter as a whole although stark is superb in and of itself um no more so my problem with this is the prose this book is written in short chapters. Now, if you know me, I absolutely love a short chapter. Some of these are like, like two pages. Some of them are three pages. It should be an absolute breeze to go through. The problem is, is that as this is a satire, and as this is a comedy, if you don't find any of it funny, each chapter is pretty much trying to give a punchline. I didn't find this funny. It reminded me of Seinfeld. Like, you could imagine Jim and Ed sat in the car, having like a little quip back and forth, and then the bass are that, That's not the fretboard, and I don't know why I'm playing like this, but you get the idea. Feeling generous, let's have some examples. So this happens right at the beginning. Wheat is trying to speak to Granny Sia, and she can't hear a thing and then, but the moment that he swears she straight away says I won't have that kind of talk from my kids <laughs> chapter 3 when the sheriff's turn up to the crime scene uh, he's asked uh, do you hate the crime scene because of the murder and he goes I don't care about the blood it's the goddamn paperwork <laughs> those are two examples but I think if you find this book funny you're going to breeze through it and if you don't find it funny it's going to feel like a chore. I would say I could see this being picked up by Jordan Peele and Quentin Tarantino. It has that style of dialogue of back and forth. I could see this being like a really good film. Like I truly mean that. Like I could see this being like a spot on film. Yeah, the trees. It, it, it's a it's a three for me. And, and sadly, the the trees are, are, are going down. Are they yelling timber? You better move. You better dance. Let's make a night. You won't remember. I'll be the one. You won't forget. Ooh, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. The buggery boys, the diggity doll. I'll have them like Miley Cyrus. Blows off. Took it their bras and their thong. Blows off. Face down. Booty up. Timber. That's the way we want the walk. Timber. I'm slicker than an old spill. She says she won't, but I bet she will. Timber. String your partner round and round. End of the night. It's going down. 